Kentucky and we're here at the Butler in Potts Point, beautiful restaurant. We've yeah. just enjoyed an amazing lunch for the launch of Rexona Clinical Protection Antiperspirant Deodorant. And we've been talking all about sweat. I mean, how often do you get to talk about sweat and really learn a few facts? So, not often <laughs> not enough. Not often enough. You should be doing it over I lunch mean, every day. That's really. right. So, yeah. It was a little bit awkward when we were eating the pate and we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> talking about sweat, but I think it's really important that women talk about it and learn about it because we're not really supposed to sweat and uh, it's a bit of a taboo topic, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it's like body hair, right? Like you have it, but you're not meant to have it, so you pretend you don't have it because it makes you boyish. You think that's boyish is <laughs> yes. bad, right? Yeah, and you were saying that even in your practice, you often don't have people actually coming to you with sweat issues because they're too embarrassed. Never, ever. I mean, it's interesting. Girls will come to me and tell me that they're having an affair, that they need a herpes test. Uh, maybe they'll tell me that they're a little bit bloated because, you know, the thing that comes with bloating we don't do. But they also don't tell me about their sweat. And often it is a medical problem, so I do actually need to know about it. But in that case of the 0.6 to 1% of Aussie women who have hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating, that is potentially a medical problem. So mm. you've got to talk to us about it. Yeah, it's important. And so tell me, Ginny, why do we sweat? What's it all about? Well... In theory, it's about cooling down. So the sweat is water, it goes and sits on your skin, it evaporates, it cools you down. Happy days, but then you've got a second type of sweat, which comes from the apocrine gland, a different kind of sweat gland that sits mainly on hairy skin. So armpits, anogenital area, sorry, but it's there. I have to, I have to say. Um, we don't have that either. None of us have that area. No, we don't have hair after all. Uh, but the apocrine sweat which has really an unknown function. It is really quite mysterious. I've never worked that out, Mother Nature, thank you. Because not only is it normal sweat with all the salts and the water, but they package it up with, or you package it up with, a little bit of fat, a little bit of protein. Happy days for bacteria. They love it. Smelly bacteria love that stuff. And out comes this kind of lovely yellow sweat that stains your underarms if you have T-shirts. And uh, it's really quite unpleasant, and that's really the stuff we're trying to avoid. And so you, something interesting as well, hairier people are sweatier generally. Well, so those... Ecrine, the normal sweat glands are all over your body. They're in your, right. you know, in your scalp, they're on your face, they give you a shiny face, they can be between your breasts, on yeah. your back. But it turns out the apocrine glands, which are those ones that I told you about that have the protein and the fat in them, that only